Where do I see myself as the chief marketing officer? Or as just a partner in the company, just in general, just your future casting. Yeah. Well, so the the way I see it is that, um, you know, there is no difference with the partner title other than um, there is equity on the backside. Mm -hmm. Um, But you're building something that, you know, you're hoping to leave a legacy. Inevitably, running my own, I wouldn't have been able to Mm -hmm. without having you. Yeah, for without sure. having that salesperson and the Amanda to help with all of the administrative and, right. and you know she does social and things I hate. Hey, what's up my fellow creatives? Look who I got here today. Happen to have the one and only Chris McKenzie, my business partner. What's up, brother? Hey, I'm so glad you're here. All the way from Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're here, we wanna have a special little video we wanted to make for you guys and have a conversation, talk about the history, Chris's history, my history and his history with the company. Just kind of give you guys a little bit of background that I think you guys are gonna find really enlightening. You're gonna find some gold nuggets in this and you're gonna find some things that may push you outside of your comfort zone like it has for me and for him, some learning lessons that are gonna be along the way. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and jump and jump into the conversation. So Chris, you've been at this a long time doing web design, and uh, marketing and SEO now for us for what, 20, since 2019. So we're talking about, we're coming up to four years. 2019, is that right? Uh huh. March, March yeah. of 2019, almost four years. Almost. Yeah. It's a long time. That is a long time. A lot it's of history. Been a, it's been a long road. It's been a long, but fun, <laughs> very fun road. So let's talk a little bit about, let's back up just a little bit and talk about before you came here and just give people a little bit of background of who you are. We already said you're from Tulsa, Oklahoma, but let's give them a little more context about you. Okay, well, I won't go back too far. Uh, Starting with my career, I graduated from Oklahoma State University. My degree is in multimedia. Um, So that taught me, I mean, it's a multimedia. So (laughs) it taught me pretty well everything I needed to know to start my business um, coming straight out of college, which didn't work too well. So I took a I took a a job working for uh, the Tulsa World, a local newspaper there. And um, that lasted a few years, stepped out on my own eventually. And that did um, go well for a long time, but eventually it fell apart. I um, turned to uh, drugs and and some various uh, other things that led me to uh, crime that put me in prison uh, for a 10 year sentence. Ouch. So it was a pretty uh, trying time. And during that, I learned a lot about myself, how to overcome my problems and the things that got me there uh, came out so much stronger. And, and uh, I can't really describe all the different things I, I got from it, but mainly just a, a real sense of um, direction. And so <laughs> things didn't go so easy uh, for me coming out. Um, I, you know, I I tried so many different things to get a job, to run my own business. And it just, it was hard because all the clients that I had before, they, their websites weren't there anymore. And, you know, I lost my computer. I didn't have anything to show for what I could do other than to say I graduated from college, you know, really. And so it was very difficult. And so I started applying to jobs, as many of you know, um, it's easy to do with Indeed and you know, all these different things. I, I say I probably put a thousand applications in before I applied for your company. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for you taking a chance on me, you know, I started at a, at a rate that I was uncomfortable with, you know, uh, with my pride and everything. It wasn't, you know, it's not disrespectful to you or anything, yeah. but it was lower than what I felt like I was worth. Um, but I, I met you in the middle and you got me to where I, I needed to be uh, in my eyes as a starting point within very short, I think it was 60 to 90 yeah, days, yeah. got me there fast. Yeah. So um, it was, you know, you know, several dollars um, an hour increase per you know, few weeks or a month. But anyway, so that that was what got me to you. Mm-hmm. And then from that point, um, we'll, we'll circle back to that in a second, because yeah. I want to talk from that point forward. But okay. going back, you said a few things uh, along your journey that I think were really, really neat. Okay. While you spent that that time really rediscovering yourself after 
graduating from college and building your own thing and doing well, then everything falls apart, right? I, I think to myself, in situations like that, you don't end up in a situation like that without having something traumatic or hard happen to your life because that saying that hit me pretty hard was hurt people hurt people, right? I've had a lot of hurt, a lot of trauma, and I've hurt a lot of people in my life. And I've spent a lot of time, energy, and effort, not just trying to help other people, but also now in the last few years, helping myself and healing myself so that I don't continue to create those same patterns and those same things in my life. And that's what I noticed about you. And just in the time that we've working together is you've put so much energy and emphasis onto healing and working on yourself personally, professionally, spiritually, physically, and all these different areas of your life. And I think that's where a lot of creatives get stuck is they don't realize that most of their business problems are their personal problems. Oh yeah. Yeah. It goes, it goes way beyond you, what you're doing in front of the, you know, front of the machine, trying to get that job prospect for that client. It's not about increasing your sales skills or becoming a better closer or becoming a better designer. Like those things are important, but they're not going to handle and heal the root of the things that are going to affect and hurt your business, hurt your income, hurt your leadership skills, right? Because I've watched you as a leader in this company, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, change and shift over the years. And it's awesome to watch that. You wouldn't be able to have done that if it wasn't for you being open, being able to receive knowledge and information and wisdom and being yeah. able to let people pour into you and then you pouring into yourself for sure yeah no that's that's absolutely right and just to elaborate um on everything you said the truth of the matter is that we try to jump into things too quickly without doing the prep work mm -hmm. you know that's just the bottom line and um my my willingness and eagerness to to be able to <laughs> pay my rent you know led me to do the, um, what's the book? How's he say it in the book that I'm reading? The sales the ultimate machine. Sales. Pig headed discipline and determination. That's it. I mean, that's it. Having that, 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 that pig headed discipline. Yep. Absolutely. You said something right there. If we back up for a second, that I think is, is really good is your eagerness to jump in and do what you've been doing and, and being able to be able to have patience in that. That's something that I've struggled with a lot is just jumping too quick and, and skipping over steps and not doing that prep work, right? Not putting in that foundation first. But I feel like that's an area where when we've had challenging conversations, you've always been able to pause, take a breath, and then be able to have an open, vulnerable, and honest conversation, which is really hard for a lot of people. They're just not able to, to go to that length or go to that place. So I feel like that's been a, a huge advantage and a huge point for you of just being able to be able to be open enough to be able to take that criticism, feedback, and information, and then be able to apply it. Because it's not just the information, it's if you don't apply it, it's like, cool, if we have a great conversation, like, awesome, and then it goes back to the same thing. Like, well, what I, was it? That's really, really uh, humbling to hear you say that because uh, uh, receiving things is not my area. <laughs> so right. to hear someone say that, that I've done good in that way is a very big accomplishment for me because not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And I think most people are going to, have trouble receiving things they don't like to hear. Yeah, you know, course. it's hard. Um, but I think regardless, uh, where I always have been consistent is my, um, I haven't always received it great, mm -hmm. but I've, I've usually responded consistently across yeah. the board. And I think that's probably the most important thing. Even if you receive it well, but you don't change, then, you know, what's the point? Exactly. So we got Chris's application. Amanda's actually the one that found him which is our other business partner. And um, I gave away a little bit there, but Amanda's uh, the one that actually found him, brought him to me. I talked to him and immediately was like, this is this is a great guy. I could just tell he was genuine, he was authentic. And I love giving people a shot. I, don't, I didn't really care about his background. I didn't care what mistakes he had made. I just knew that he was trying to do something better for himself. And I've been there. I was there at a young, as a young kid, 18, 19 years old myself, just looking for somebody to give me a chance. And there were people that gave me chances. The first guy that let me, pay my deposit and payments when I got my first retail location. Like, so being able to give other people those types of things has been a big part of my core values. And that's what I think has created a bond between us and has really helped us overcome challenges along the way. It's just being able to know that you're dealing with somebody who's a giver and not a taker. Right. Yeah. I think that's a big shift. And that's where you and I both have that, that common kind of, kind of core value as well. It's just, we like givers, people that are just coming in to just make money or to just, you know, take care of themselves and they don't really care about anybody else. Those are not real lasting relationships that will really 
yield any fruit. Yeah, There's no totally. fruit in that. Totally. Yeah. That's been my my uh, my thought as well. That I can tell that this is not just about the money. It's not just about growing the business. It's about yeah. having a, a unity within mm -hmm. an organization that we can you know, with our combined gifts and talents, create something that will impact the world and change, you know, things that need to be fixed. I think the unity, that pack mentality, just that loyalty that we embody as a company is, is really important. I think that's a big key. And as, as a web designer, right, there's going to be people that watch this that are also going to be web designers. Before you came on board, there was a lot of challenges and things you faced. What do you think was that shift for you from being frustrated, looking, putting in a thousand applications to now, oh my gosh, I got this gig. What was that? What drove you to be able to get and change your situation? What advice would you give to somebody that was you yourself? Talk to yourself in April or let's just say February of 2019 mm -hmm. when you're out there looking. What advice would you give to that, Chris? Well, I don't think that Chris needed the advice as much as the Chris before prison, because that mm -hmm. was the Chris that really needed the conversation because he wasn't willing to sit and put in the applications. Mm -hmm. He wasn't willing to work for less than what he felt like he deserved. He wasn't willing to be consistently given rejection after rejection mm -hmm. after rejection. Yeah. And it's that, you know, I think of the uh, Will Smith movie, where yeah, he's the happiness. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. What is the pursuit of happiness? It's a pursuit towards something that is paved with heartache after heartbreak after torment after blood, sweat, and tears. Yep. And it's not pretty, it's not comfortable, and unless you're willing to go through that uncomfort, you're never gonna reach that place yep. that you wanna be. And I think it's important too to understand like the journey is the destination right the oh, journey yeah. that we've been on like where we're going and our visions and all these things are great but this journey that we've already been on if i were to be gone tomorrow i would be so satisfied looking down on this on this life that i've lived knowing that the journey that i've been on with you the journey i've been on with amanda the journey that i've been on and growing this team and this company with you has been super rewarding in itself been challenging rewarding a lot of different words a lot of joy that's come from it um, and so I think that's an important lesson for people to take away too, is just to enjoy the process. Cause a lot of people get caught up in, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need Right. That's all yeah. of a sudden that scarcity mindset. Like you said earlier, you were just needing money. You just needed to pay your rent. Yeah. You're operating from a place of lack rather than uh -huh. where you're operating from now as a place of abundance. Exactly. And, and then, you know, it's not just those people like myself that, you know, strung out and making all kinds of bad mistakes, you know, being lazy, being you know, uh, disorganized, you know, it can be the person that has a decent job or maybe they have a great job on paper, but are they really happy? You know, are you, are you comfortable or are you, are you content? You That's know, right. and then being discontent is, is sometimes one of the things it's not about necessarily, Oh, I, I want more. I want more, but it's about, are you fulfilling the passion for your life? My job right now. Okay. Is, not my dream job. I'm still not where I want to be completely. But the deal is, I'm still willing to do all the stuff that I know that I'm going to have to do to get to that place. I'm still not there yet. Yep. And I'm still years later now, would you say four years, going on four years later, I'm, I'm still not there. And I'm still putting in that work to get to where I want to go. Playing the long game. Yeah. And that what you said there about the content, you reminded me of something is there are a lot of people that are going to watch this that have the great job, that have the career that they wanted to have, whether they're a motion designer, whatever that is, but they're complacent. There's yeah. a difference between complacency and contentment. Oh, I could be content right now. I yeah. mean, we're doing we're, good. We're yeah. doing good. I don't have to push. I don't have to constantly work. I don't have, I'm working a lot compared to what I could do just yeah. to skate by. You exactly. know what I mean? to, for, to be complacent. Just, yeah, just to be complacent. And it's just yep. not comfortable for me. Complacency yep. is uncomfortable. And the contentment is where we're at right now. It's this moment, it's this, sure. this interview, it's this conversation, it's the people that are gonna watch. This is where that, that total satisfaction comes is just being in that moment and knowing that we are showing up and being our most authentic full selves 
right now. And this, you know, for me, it is it is nice because I do get, like you said, these things, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm getting, I get to come here, fly over here to see you guys, and you know, we're doing all this stuff, and that this is more along the line. So I'm getting glimpses. That's right. I'm getting glimpses right. and taste of it. Um, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not. That's good. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I like that. So <laughs> gotta stay hungry. So you hear that? Be content, not complacent. You gotta be hungry and don't skip over the, the short, you know, the prep work. You gotta put in that hard work in the beginning. You gotta put those reps in. It's gonna suck, but it's the only way you're gonna build that skill, sharpen that ax and build the skill that's gonna pay you what you want to get paid and get you where you want to get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. So, all right, so now we've kind of covered a lot there. Let's let's go to the second half of this, which is you joined our team and you were the web designer, in fact, lead web designer at that time. I was in a tough situation where I had somebody leave and I needed to find somebody that was as good as that person, if not better. But I was also in a tight financial position because I had a baby coming and a lot of stuff going on in my life at that time that was challenging. Some, some waves that I was going through, similar to what I've been going through the last six months, just nowhere near as bad. And so you come on board, you join our team. What was that? Tell me about, tell me about your journey with us for the last almost four years. Well, I mean, I knew for, I knew from, from the perspective of having run my own agency prior to everything that happened that I respected the fact that, you know, because the situation for us is we, we, all of our employees are hourly. Everybody knows how to cheat. <laughs> yeah. And I knew that that wasn't going to get me ahead. I could have compensated and made that more but for me what was important and what i put my focus and my energy on and i said this to you numerous times my goal is to make you succeed yep i want to put you out there i want and i don't care i'll be in the background um and so that's been my objective that's been my my mission in the process and i know it was it was web developer but for me how i ended up working myself into this role um, was because I became everything you needed me to be along the way to get you to where you're trying to go. Like I said, my objective was to get you where you are. And so in order to do that, I needed to be able to do ads. I didn't really know how to do ads, but I told you I did. Yeah. And I knew I'll work as hard as I could possibly work to understand everything that needed to be good and and everything has gone very good on the ad side. Yeah. The ads have been a very, very lucrative part of our business and yeah. a very, very um, consistent um, revenue stream. So definitely. You know, that that's probably the key for me is just, you know, being being everything that needed to be done and working myself into a role that I have now. Yeah. Now I know this wasn't the first gig that you had, had and your your role has changed from web designer to CMO to now partner, right? We're going to talk about that now. Um, but before this, like you've worked with other companies and the way I wanted to build this agency was like, as somebody that hates being an employee, I didn't want to create a company where people felt like they were, they were an employee and they were being micromanaged. What would you, what, what input or what feedback can you give on that part of our culture, you know, whether somebody's looking to come work with us on our team, yeah. how would you say that has been different for you versus working with other companies? Well, I can say from my managing position, what I what I've tried to do is especially the micromanagement. I do not want to micromanage. So what I have tried to implement in my own management style is to make sure that my employees know First of all, most importantly, what is my objective? Yep. What is my objective in what I'm trying to accomplish? Because what happens in a, in a micromanagement style is your employees are constantly coming to you saying, is it good enough? Yeah. Is it good enough? That's right. Right. It, but at the same time, you have to make sure that they, they're not trying to read your mind. That's right. right? So which makes um, them afraid to push the limits and make yeah, mistakes. Yeah. I mean, the, your people, your people will impress you if you give them a shot and let them let them have free reign. And so you did that with me completely. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to get in the weeds of it, and um, and that's really what what helped me, you know, to be able to show what I can do because I, I met those met those expectations, exceeded those expectations, 
and then tried to get my own team to do that as well. Exactly. So then you moved from web designer over to CMO, which is for those of you that don't know, is chief marketing officer. He handles the ad campaigns, the SEO campaigns, the website builds. I mean, he's handling 90%, 80% at least of all of the marketing that actually happens within the company that gets fulfilled, right? And then we have Amanda who's handling the operations. And then me that goes out there and brings, makes the noise and brings people in and then provides them the solution, which is Chris, right? My job is to essentially sell Chris, to sell my team, sell Amanda, sell Chris, sell Ian, and sell our team and the abilities that we have. So now you've taken up this role of CMO and you've been able to add as of last year, middle to the end of last year, the partner role yeah. onto your title, chief marketing officer slash partner. What, What's that like? Where do you see yourself and where does you, where do you see that kind of going? Where do I see myself as the chief marketing officer? Or as just a partner in the company, just oh, in general, just your future casting. Yeah. Well, so the, the way I see it is that, um, you know, there is no difference with the partner title other than um, there is equity on the backside. Mm -hmm. um, but you're building something that, you know, you're hoping to leave a legacy. Um, it's, it's phenomenal that I was able to get to where I am because when I, I didn't want to put in a thousand job applications, yeah. I just wanted to do this. Yeah. Right. And so it, it worked out where I was able to do this because inevitably running my own, I wouldn't have been able to mm -hmm. without having you, yeah, for without sure. having that salesperson and the Amanda to help with all of the administrative and, right. and, you know, she does social and things I hate. You know, well, and, and I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't have done the, the same in reverse and neither could have Amanda. And sure. And because of that synergy between the three of us, we've gone from a half a million dollar agency right around the time you came, I think it was, you know, 400, 450, somewhere in that area to yeah. now over a million dollar agency, right? That's, that's a huge shift. We've more than doubled our income in over the course of that time, which is a huge shift. And now we're, we're pushing up, we're, we're going towards the two, two and a half million dollar goal. That's kind of like the new goals that we're setting. And we've shifted and pivoted our entire brand towards social impact, right? Yeah. So like, that's something that you and I both have in common and Amanda has in common. Like we are not interested in just the money grab. If we wanted to just make money, you would have applied for a job that offered you twice what we offered you in the beginning, right? You knew that there was something bigger at play here without even knowing, you knew that there was something there that was, that was pulling on you, that was pulling towards you to do this and to make the sacrifice on the pay. And so, that character and that long-term vision is what I saw in you. And now here we are pivoted into a completely different type of company than when you started. Like, yeah, sure, we're doing marketing and advertising and graphics and websites, but the types of clients that we go after now and who we want to work with is completely changed, it's completely different. We're not looking for just the guy that wants to get rich and just make as much money as possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I, I do believe that that is the direction that, um, our agency was supposed to always be going, but it takes time to figure that out. And um, having a, a team that can talk and communicate, I mean, yep. you definitely came up with that one. Yeah, that one came That yeah. one came in an interesting way. And that's another story for another day of how that came to me. I'd be interested to share that with you guys because it's kind of along the health side of what we do. And that's what Chris and I are all about with Instagraphics and what we're doing with the agency is being well-rounded is in your health, your wealth, and your relationships. These are three core areas that you have to have. And uh, I think this is just a really important piece. So that's what we're focused on. I was able to come up with that social impact idea. Chris and Amanda both didn't even hesitate when I, when I told them about it. They were both on board with it right from the get. And it's been, at first we took a hit financially, but it was very quick where we were able to not only bounce back, but do way more than that. I would think it was like a month after where we had our biggest month ever. You know, now we're a six figure a month marketing agency and we're, we're pushing, you know, way past that now. So we're really looking to make some big moves. I know as from my, just from my perspective to you, I appreciate your patience with me. We've had hard conversations. I've, I've made mistakes. He's mis made mistakes, but we've used those as building blocks to build us and elevate us to the next level and to continue to grow. And so I'm just super grateful for you. I'm excited about where we're going. Um, I think that we're just still really, honestly, at the very beginning uh, of where we're going to be in another five, 10 years from now. It's going to be amazing to look back and see this interview. And uh, I'm just super humbled and, and thankful for all your hard work and dedication, man.
likewise everything you said plus yeah. more <laughs> so it's going to be a fun journey um if you're not already following us part of our community definitely hit the like button subscribe button um, on this drop a comment introduce yourself if you're a web designer and you want to get to know chris the easiest way to do that is to get into the instagraphics pro network it's on facebook we also have our own community that you can check out you can sign up for if you want to be a part of that it's a paid community uh, but check out instagraphics pro network there's a link down in the description of this video and uh man i'm excited that you got to watch this and, and get to, we can share a little bit of our journey with you so all right all right thanks brother i appreciate it all right you guys i'm adrian boycell chris mckenzie keep looking up